Ah, tigas to saan ko. Ang 45. Once upon a time, there was a little mermaid named Ariel who lived in a kingdom under the sea. What? Ariel was not happy being a mermaid. Oh my. So long to be part of, part of the world far above the ocean floor, the human world. Ariel even had her own collection of human things. She kept the objects in her secret grotto and would go there to admire them, imagining that she was human too. Ariel's father came trying to discover that Ariel had been swimming through the ocean's surface. He was very upset with her because contact with the human world was secretly forbidden. The king put his court compressor, Sebastian, in charge of his headstrong daughter. Ariel needs someone to keep her out of trouble. The sea king explained, and you are just a crab to do it. Oh my. Yeah, it's go. But Sebastian could not stop the determined little mermaid. One day, while swimming with her friend, Flounder Ariel saw a sheet floating on the surface of the water. She swam up the ship in spite a handsome prince named Eric. Here. Yeah. Sir Grimsby presented Eric with the statue of himself. <coughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Grimsby presented Eric with a statue of himself for a birthday present. Then he asked when the prince was going to think about marriage. <clears throat> oh, come on, Grim, said Eric. I haven't, I haven't found the right girl yet, but she's out there somewhere. And when I find her, I'll know. Oh, my, good job. Suddenly, a terrible storm came up and Prince Eric fell ob overboard. Ariel dove underneath the crashing waves and pulled him to safety. On the shore, she sang to Eric until she's Grims Sir Grimsby came to rescue him. What? I heard a girl singing, <coughs> Eric said. She had a beautiful voice. Wow. I think you swallowed a bit too much water, said Grimsby, helping Eric to his feet. When King Triton found out that Ariel had rescued Eric, he was furious. Have you lost your senses? King Triton asked. He's a human. You're a mermaid. You could never be together. But Daddy, Ariel pr protested. I love him. King Triton was so furious that he destroyed Ariel's <coughs> grotto and everything in it. Grotto. Okay, grotto. If this is the only way to get through to you, then so be it. Ariel looked around what, uh, at what had once been her wonderful grotto and began to cry. Suddenly, she heard voices. Poor child, he said one. Poor sweet child, he said another. Ariel found herself surrounded by two swimmy eels, Fort Sam and Jess Sam. We, we, we were, we were, were spent, sent someone who can help you, said the eels. Ursula can make your dreams come true. Ariel choked back her tears. The sea witch, she cried. That is turn. No. Oh, your turn. <coughs> Ariel Flander and Sebastian went to see Ursula the Sea Witch. Ursula promised <coughs> to turn Ariel into the human for three days and exchange for her voice. She explained that in order for Ariel to remain human, the prince would have to kiss her before the sunset on the third day. Or you turn back 
and to a mermaid, and you belong to me, said the Ursula Cockling. Ariel nervously agreed. <coughs> <coughs> Sebastian and Flounder watched in horror as Ariel signed a cochrane with the sea witch. Mommy, it's your turn! You turn on me. Or read it for me, can you read it for me? The exchange was made and Ursula captured Ariel's voice in her shell. When wheeling and twirling Ariel's tail, Transformed become to human legs. Oh my! On land, Ariel could not believe that her legs were real. Sometimes, sometimes difference about you, said her friend Scuttle the seagull. She's got legs, cried Sebastian. He's got to make the prince fall in love with her. <laughs> Added Flounder. All three friends agreed to have Oh, yeah. Way. I'm tired. When Prince Eric and his dog, Max, found Ariel, he didn't recognize her. He only remembered the beautiful voice of the person <laughs> who had rescued him. You can't speak? He asked Ariel, Oh, then you can't be who I thought you were. But don't worry, I'll help you. The prince took Ariel home to his castle on the second day of his visit. They toured his kingdom. Sitting in the lagoon together. Nice! Lagoon together. The moment came when Eric leaned over to kiss Ariel. But before he could kiss her, Flot Sam and Jet Sam made the boat overturn and they fell into the water. The sea witch had been watching in her crystal ball. That was a close one, said Rotola. Too close. It's time for Ursula to take matters in her own, into her own tentacles. Tentacles? What's tentacles? It's Ursula's favorite thing. Using that magic, Ursula changed herself into a beautiful maiden. She wore the shell that held wow. Ariel's voice around her neck. As soon as Eric heard the voice, he was hypnotized. He agreed to marry the maiden that ve very day aboard the royal wedding ship. Oh my. That's Flesh I will be. Terrible. Okay, you read. No, Flesh I will. No, okay. Go read. Bladder <coughs> Shy. Bladder Shy. Oh, Bladder Shy. <coughs> Ariel was beside herself when she heard the news. Lucky Scuttle flew overhead and discovered the maiden's secret. She was the sea witch in disguise. Scuttle and Flounder went into action while Sebastian went to get the Sea King. Scotto brought his friends aboard the ship and tried to stop the wedding during their, during their, their struggle. The maiden's necklace shattered Eric awoke from his trance. Er and Ariel got her voice back. You're too late, cried the sea witch as she watched it. Ariel turned back into a mermaid. Ursula grabbed, Ursula grabbed her and jumped into the water. It's not you. I'm after, she said to Ariel. 
I've got a much big fish to fry. Ursula saw King Triton swimming towards her. The king offered to change places with his daughter, and Ursula accepted. At last, this, these are mine, she cried, grabbing his crown and magic district. Now, I'm, I am ruler of all the ocean.